Our next guest, uh, Mr. Larry Gray. He's a well-known coach and teacher in the San Francisco dis School District. And he also spearheaded the Midnight Basketball Program. And he will speaking tonight on issues surrounding our youth. Can we give him a round of applause, please? Threw me a curveball. You invited me to come and observe, and now he throws me to the lion's den. That's okay. Uh, I make a joke about where I'm from. I always tell people I am from south of America, and I get a reaction of, where is that? And that is San Antonio, Texas by way of San Marcos and Austin. Uh, my father's from Austin, my mother from San Marcos, and I was born in San Antonio. Oh, okay, okay I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I grew up uh, part of my life in Texas, and I experienced um, colored and white bathrooms, water fountains. I experienced hap hap to go into the alley to go into a movie where one, one of our brothers or sisters did all the work. They gave the tickets, sold the hot dogs, did the popcorn. There was always long lines for us to get into the movies. Uh, I experienced riding on the back of the bus. Uh, so we have, they say we have come a long way, some so, but I still see the same thing here in San Francisco, somewhat that I experienced growing up in the South. Um, and the young man and the uh, lady was saying that we need to um, take our young people and work with them. I agree with that. Uh, I believe that we need to get more of our young people involved, not only in everyday life, but in our churches. Uh, I've noticed that a lot of the quote unquote older people have left this earth and there's no one to take their place, no, no one to, to take what they was doing and continue the journey, no one would have handed them the uh, baton to keep it on. And that's one of the things that I try to do uh, in our midnight basketball program is to mentor the young people, uh, 13 to 17 and 17 to 25. And now we're trying to work more with the young people uh, because the older guys, they set in their ways and you have to fight them. You want to deal with the young people 12 to 17 that's on straddling the fence. We know we got a lot of young people don't know which way to go. And what we try to do is give them alternatives to the streets. I've been a teacher for over 30 years, but I've been at Balboa High School for 20 years, and right now I'm the only black teacher there. I'm trying to get together with a group of black people to see if we can get black history back into our schools. I believe that if the young people knew, know and knew where they came from and how they were able to operate today, I think we would do better. I think they would act better. Uh, whenever we have black programs, they act so much better. I wish a lot of them could have come here tonight to ex hear about black history. And what I try to explain to them is that there's so much history that people don't want us to know, don't want them to know about. They don't want us to know about. I mean, I talked to them about Lewis Latimer. They want to know who is Lewis Latimer. He discovered our light, but due to the fact that 
he couldn't get the copyright of the patent. Thomas Edison got it. He got the, he got the, uh, uh, he claimed the light bulb. And that's what, that's all we know is that Thomas Edison discovered the light bulb. But if you do research, you find out, find out that he didn't. He just took it because that was the thing that they did with us as blacks. We didn't have no rights. And we need to know things like that. You know, we need to, our kids need to know that. So that's one of the things I'm going to push for in our school district is to see if we can get black history back. I took, I had it in school, you know. And one of the things that have always bothered me is when I was in, in, in Texas and in school, I learned better. I learned better because everybody that was there looked like me. You know, we had discipline. They disciplined us. And there was no parent upset. The only reason they was upset was because they had to do that. And when you got home, you had to deal with them. Uh, we read, there wasn't no social promotion. Today, it's social promotion. I can't deal with him or her, send them to the next teacher. And that's not what we are about. Uh, we're about trying to help our young people be better. Go to school, go to college. We know College is not for everybody. But there are programs, there are uh, apprenticeship programs that people can get involved with and learn to be a, a, a constructive, have construction in your life, help you raise your family, take care of your kids, and be a better person. There's a, there's a sign that I see all the time that says, uh, prison system is a modern day slavery. The way they showed it back in the day with our people, how they was dressed, they just did a modern day version of it with the jumpsuits, the orange jumpsuits. Same thing. You make license plates and you make uh, school supplies free. So one of the things that we, we really want to do as black folks is come together and put it this way, we need to respect each other first. Yes. If we don't respect each other first, how do we expect law enforcement to respect us? Yes. If you respect yourself, you can demand respect. Wherever I go, I demand respect. You know, I re demand respect. I do not allow, allow kids to call me uh, Gray or Lawrence. I don't allow that. I was always taught, no matter how old a person, as long as they was older than you, you put a handle on their name. Mr. Miss, Mrs. at that time, a lot of, now they done changed it to just Miss, whether you married or not. But I demand at Balboa, some of the older, older younger gentlemen, they try to call me gray, I don't answer them. Because it's not what, you, what they call you, it's what you answer to. It has to be coach or mister. Because a lot of them, I am old enough to be their grandfather or great-grandfather, some of them. So I demand that respect. But we as black folks got to demand respect to each other. All these black-on-black -black crimes, ridiculous. It's, it's sad. And the bad thing about it, nobody want to fight. When I was growing up, you fought, got dusted, come back two or three times. You got whooped, you said, forget it. Let's be friends. Let's shake it off. Now, you whoop on somebody, they go get a gun. I don't mean to be, okay, I don't mean to be, uh, I, I try to bring a little humor in sometime when I talk. And I tell people, and this is no disrespect, ladies. You can get a gun quicker than you can a woman. Think about it. You can walk out on the street right now. Somebody say, hey, you want to buy a gun? I got a gun. So, you know, we, all this, all this drama is not going to stop until 
the community say, we've had enough. A lot of times people don't realize when someone else is shot, it, I don't know who they are, but it bothers me because that means another life is lost. We don't know whether it could have been, whether they could have been a president, uh, a doctor, a lawyer, or whatever. We'll never know. So thank you for having me. Just say them a few words, but I just don't want you to be tricking me anymore. Tell me what you want me to do. Don't have me. Don't fool. You don't have to trick me. You don't have to fool me here. I was coming anyway, but thank you all.